In the history of the world, nothing has had more power than truth. It's the cause of wars, the goal of revolutions. With truth comes understanding, and with understanding comes freedom. Often we treat truth like we treat money. We possess it, hoard it, and stow it away, using it for control over those without it. But God has entrusted us with the truth so that we could steward it, so that we could rightly handle it. In 2 Timothy 2.15, the Apostle Paul writes, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. The word for rightly handling in this verse is orthotomeo, which means to carve a clear path, to make the way straight. It calls to mind the ministry of John the Baptist, the voice that cried in the wilderness. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. John the Baptist models what it means to be a wise steward of truth, to handle the truth rightly, to clear the way for the revelation of God. And it was Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is God's truth, the truth. We are not. We do not possess the truth any more than we possess Jesus. The truth is living and active. It comes to life in us and through us. And when we rightly handle the truth, it flows through us to others. We create a clear path for God to reach the world through us. John understood this well, that unlike money, truth isn't a limited resource to hold on to. The more we handle it rightly, the more it multiplies in the world. So what does that mean for us? If the truth is alive, planted within us and coming to maturity, it means receiving the truth that is planted within you with humility and meekness, letting it transform you from the inside out, and then putting aside our own preferences and prejudices to let the one who is the truth speak the truth. Being a good steward means announcing the arrival of the king, decreasing so the king can increase. Bearing witness to the gift that God has given humankind through your words and your deeds. So receive truth, be transformed by it, and clear a path for it to others. Show the world the person who is the truth, the person who is full of grace and truth. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The truth lives within you. It has set you free. And now you can set it free. Let the truth speak through you to the world. That is how we rightly handle the truth. Amen, amen. Will you stand with me as we go before the Lord in the reading of his word? I'll ask if you were turning in your Bibles to the book, to the gospel of John, John chapter 14 if you're there with me say amen okay i'll wait on you i'm going to give you a minute or two john chapter 14 john chapter 14 now this morning um i will be going through several passages in john uh john chapter 14 15 16 and 17 and so i'll be going through several passages uh, just to illustrate the point in John chapter 14, verse 1 through 3, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Here's his words. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. May the Lord add the blessing to the reading of his word. Our Father and our God, we glorify you this day, and we pray and ask that you would lead, guide, and direct us into your word of truth. And as the apostle James says, help us to be doers of the word and not merely hearers to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. 
Jesus was on his way to the cross. In John 14 through 17, this is that very night in which he was betrayed. He's in the upper room with the 12 apostles. And this, this morning I want to um, go through, um, as we've been going through the series and seasons, understanding stewardship, today we are going to look at a season of the church, a season of the church. This is the stewardship of truth. And to set this up, this is why we're in this passage, Jesus about to go to the cross the next day, on that night in which he was betrayed, um, he says some things to his disciples. He told them that they were going to go through certain seasons. Let's just call these seasons dispensations. There's a term that we use in uh, theology called dispensation. And the term dispensation means a season or a period or a time. And as we are going through, we see how the Lord actually um, have us to operate in seasons. That's why he created the seasons in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, and placed man within season and used seasons to measure our time on this earth. And so the term dispensation is just speaking of a time period, a season, basically how God operates in given seasons. Now, we are presently in a period of waiting, a season of waiting. As the church, we're in the season of waiting. And this uh, particular time period is called the church age, better known as the age of grace. When Daniel spoke of it, he called it the age of the Gentiles. And so we're in this time period where we didn't see this period within the Old Testament. We only saw the first advent of Christ, Isaiah 53, when Christ would come and be crucified, and then his return. So the age of the church was not seen in the Old Testament. That's why the Apostle Paul called it a mystery. The church is indeed a mystery. And so we're living right now in a period called the church age, the age of grace or the age of the Gentiles. This is a season in history. This is a period, a time in history. Now, Jesus, before he went off, he told his disciples, he says, uh, I go to prepare a place for you, and where I am, there you will be also. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. So he told his disciples, I'm going away for a time. I'm going away for a period. And one of his disciples didn't really understand. His name is Thomas. Now, don't get on Thomas, right, because the Scripture says Thomas doubted. And we try to pretend like, you know, Thomas is an anomaly when we all doubt at times. And so I, I'm, I'm tired of people getting on Thomas, like, like, oh, doubting Thomas and giving him nicknames and stuff, doubting Thomas. No, Thomas is just like all of us. Jesus is saying he go, he's going away. If I was there, like, well, where are you going? I taught you the king. Didn't you come to set up your kingdom? And Jesus had to encourage them. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how do we know the way? Now, what Jesus said to him after that is very profound, and this is what I want you to hang on to right now. Jesus said to Thomas, when Thomas asked him, where are you going? We do not know the way. Jesus told him the way because he said, Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you in my father's house. So Jesus is going to his father's house. He's going home. And now Thomas asked him, how do we get to your house? How do we get home? Jesus told him this. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to my daddy's house unless they come through me. So if you want to go where I am going, you need the key to get into my father's house. I am the key. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the father unless they come through me. Not through Buddha. Not through Allah. Not through Confucius. Not through pantheism or atheism, but through me. Okay. Why is that significant? Why? Because it's his father's house. 
Heaven isn't a celestial place for people to go when they die who did good. Because that's how the American Christianity would want people to believe. That's why when you ask folks if they're going to heaven, oh yes. Why? Because I'm good. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Were you invited? Do you have a pass? Do you have a key? There's one key. There's one way to get in. This is the truth. There's only one way. And Jesus says, if you want to know that way, I am the way. So the first thing we see here, I want you to take note of that Jesus is the truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I want you to take notice of how Jesus identifies himself. Why? Because this key to getting into the Father's house, to getting into the kingdom of God, is what we have been given stewardship over. The truth. The truth. Jesus says in John 14, 16 through 17, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper and he, watch this, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. So Jesus is telling them, listen, the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to live in you. He's going to reside in you and he's going to lead you into the truth. But notice what, he told it. notice what he told them. I'm sending you a helper, another one just like me. He's called the spirit of truth. So Jesus just identified, he says, I am the truth. Now he's saying the spirit is the truth. So wait a minute, now we have two truths. We have two truths, right? Jesus is truth, the spirit is truth. Well then, Jesus did not leave his church alone. He sent another like himself that is the spirit of truth. So when we say Jesus has never left us and he will never leave us nor forsake us, it's because he's never left us and he could never leave us, that is, those who are the church. Because the spirit of God indwells every believer. And so Jesus says that he will not leave us as orphans, but he will send us a helper. Now in John 15, 26, Jesus says, when the helper comes, who I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth, who proceeds from me, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. So Jesus is saying, when the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit will testify about Christ. Now I want you, in your personal time, to read John chapter 14 through 17. Because how Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit, he's not a feeling. He's not an it. He's not a thing to catch. He doesn't make you run around and go crazy. He leads you into the Word of God and he instructs you into the truth of who Jesus Christ is. It is only the Spirit of God that can give us the conviction to live rightly before Jesus Christ. So when we misunderstand the role of the Spirit because we want the gifts, right? And we perceive the gifts to be these crazy, whacked out things because we completely misunderstand what it means to live a practical life being led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God doesn't make you feel in a given instance an excitement to run around, but then when you stop running around, you act the fool. You run around shouting and screaming, but as soon as church is ended and you go home, you're cussing people out. No, 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 no. I don't know what spirit you have, but that was in the spirit of God. Because the spirit of God is meant to lead us through life. Teaching us, directing us, instructing us how to live for Christ. Not how to live as a Republican. Not how to live as a Democrat. Not how to live, watch this, as a black person or white person. But how to live as children of God. Our identity is now all wrapped up in Him. And this is what? This is what the Word of God does. This is why it is so important. We need to understand the work of the Spirit. He leads us into truth. This world is giving us a bunch of lies. I said before there was one race and some people got upset with me because we have taken up the mantra of the world to believe that there is more than one race. So therefore, we have made distinctions among ourselves. And James says, let no one make distinction among themselves. There is no Jew. There is no Greek. There's no slave. There's no free. 
There's no male, there's no female. Not in the kingdom of God, see, but when we're in the kingdom of man, yes. In the kingdom of man, yes. In the world, the world makes distinctions, yes. But I'm speaking of the kingdom of God. And when the Spirit of God comes, He leads us into the truth. Now, here's the thing. The Spirit, who is the truth, testifies about Jesus Christ, who is the truth. I'll say this again. The Spirit of God, who is the truth, comes to testify about Jesus Christ, who is the truth. In John 16, verse 13 through 14, he says, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative. Wait a minute. So the Spirit isn't a feeling. He's speaking on someone's initiative, on behalf of someone. So if we, when someone say, ooh, ooh, I want to hear from God, I'm like, man, I, I don't even know what people mean when they want to hear a word from God. That means you don't have them. I will say this again, church folk. If you're waiting to hear from God, you don't know him. Here's why. If the Holy Spirit is indwelling you, and his only job is to lead you into truth, and he speaks to you all the time, how dare you say I need to hear from God? It's probably because the fuel that you need that the Holy Spirit uses is the word of truth, and we're not walking around with the word of truth. But we are watching Desperate Housewives. We are watching all these funny, crazy, whacked out shows. We are filling ourselves with the philosophies and the things of this world, but not the Word of God. Why? Because the Word of God will make you look ridiculous to your peers. It makes no sense in this culture. And the Word of God is going to be maligned in the culture by people who call themselves people of God because they're going to compromise with the culture. So when you speak the true Word of God, folk in the church won't like it. Because we've got so, oh, I think that's what Paul says, we've now become apostate. And I must say, I am seeing the church in America. It's apostasy. Where men are just like the guys in Jeremiah and Ezekiel, the shepherds who are supposed to be leading people of God, says, woe to the shepherds of Israel, for you've been feeding yourself rather than feeding the sheep of God. Thus says the Lord, I will come and I will take the sheep out of the hand of the wayward shepherds. And we're seeing this today, but watch what he says. The spirit of truth comes to lead us into the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and disclose it to you. Wait a minute. So that means the Holy Spirit is teaching us on a daily basis about Jesus? Yes. That means that the Holy Spirit on a daily basis is teaching us how to live for Jesus? Yes. Does that mean the Holy Spirit on a daily basis is conforming us to the image of Christ? Yes. So wait a minute. That means the Holy Spirit is living and active in our lives? Yes. So you don't have to ask for him? No. Receive him. What a minute, wait a minute, what do you mean I don't have to ask? But I was taught you have to ask for the, ask for the Spirit. Listen very carefully. You could ask for gifts and stuff all you want. I, I, I don't know how that works, but I know when the Holy Spirit enters into every believer, he seals them until the day of redemption. And after the sealing, he gives gifts into the church. We don't ask for these gifts, he just gives it to you. He just gives it to you. See, I don't know about y'all, but the only thing I like about Christmas is what it represents. It represents the fact that you don't have to ask your daddy for no gifts. He just gives it to you. You wake up one morning, it's right there under your bed. It's right there in your kitchen. It's right there. Why? You don't have to ask God for, as a matter of fact, didn't Jesus say that in the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 6, when he taught them how to pray? You need not ask your heavenly father, for he already knows what you need. But when you ask, ask this way. <laughs> and then he took the attention off of you and placed it on thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then he says, now give me the things that I need for today. Why? Well, in order that I would live for you. <laughs> but forgive me. But only as I forgive others. Whoa. Imagine if the Spirit of God is leading us 
based on the word of God. Watch what he says. Jesus, who is the truth, sent the spirit of truth to testify about Jesus, who is the truth, to guide all who would believe in the truth. <laughs> Can you handle the truth? John 14, 25 and 26. These, Jesus says, these things I have spoken to you while abiding with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. So we see now the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to bring to our remembrance all that Jesus Christ taught. Listen, the Holy Spirit is going to come and bring to our remembrance all that Jesus Christ said. The Holy Spirit is going to come and bring... To, well, wait a minute. I wasn't there with Jesus. So how would I... How would I know that that's what he took? Oh, oh, the, oh, the word, oh, 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 this right here. Oh, that's where it is. Oh, I didn't even know that. Look, I got a Bible right here. See, folks be walking around with a Bible brandishing it. But if you close it, you know what's in it. See, because if I stand up here and I quote the scripture, would you know that I'm quoting the scripture? Would you know if I'm quoting the scripture, like if I just start quoting scripture, would you know it's actually scripture? How, like, how would you know? Unless you know what you know. If you don't know, how would you know? The spirit is not going to come and drop this by osmosis into your brain. It says, he says, Jesus says, the spirit leads us into the truth. Okay. Okay. The testimony about Jesus is the truth because it comes from the spirit of truth who speaks on behalf of the truth. I want you to get the truth. Notice what Jesus says in John 17, 17 and 19. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. For their sake, sanctify for I, for their sakes, I sanctify myself. Now, Jesus is saying he sanctifies himself. I'm going to go into that in a second. That they themselves may also be sanctified in truth. Wait a minute, that we may be sanctified in truth. So Jesus sanctified himself that we may be sanctified in truth. What is he talking about? Huh. Well, here's what he says. The word of God is truth. Wait a minute. But Jesus said he is the truth. Yes. Then he said the Holy Spirit is the truth. Yes. Now he said the word of God is the truth? Yes. What? All this, this is a lot of truth, Pastor Dames. Yes. But all is one. <laughs> it's only one truth. Jesus is the truth. The spirit is the truth. The word is the truth. It's all true. It's only one truth. But here's the crazy thing. How do you know what's true? How do you know what's true? Think about this, how we use that word in culture. We go around, we say, well, that, that's true. That's true based on what? Notice, for believers to rightly understand how we're supposed to live on this earth, we need to have the truth as the standard of measurement for everything in the world that calls itself truth. That means when you're listening to someone speak and they say, I'm telling you the truth, really? See the word of God says. Oh, because someone, is, um, because someone is running a country doesn't mean that they speak the truth. Okay, if this person says, the, okay, the truth is a man is not a man if he doesn't feel like a man. He can be a woman if he feels like a woman. Is that true? No, but the country is saying yes. But the country is saying yes. Which will you follow? Will you follow the truth or will you follow someone else's truth? Wait a minute, they call this true, but it's not truth. But didn't Isaiah say they will call the truth a lie and the lie the truth? Okay, okay. The word of God is truth. Jesus is truth and the spirit is truth. Now, the spirit who is truth takes the word of Jesus Christ, which is the truth, and reveals it to his church to live in the truth. So we are supposed to be living in truth our lives are supposed to be based on truth now here's the thing the truth always contradicts the lie the light always shuns away darkness and if 
we say that we're the truth and we're living according to the lie, then we're living in darkness. That's why Paul says that we should not tie ourselves to the philosophies of men. In Colossians, Paul makes it very clear. We should not adopt the philosophies of this world, the, philo the philosophical constructs of this world. And I am hearing individuals today who are tying themselves and tying the church to these constructs made by men. And here's how we justify things. Oh, let's take the good out of it. And let's throw away the bad. <laughs> Satan is a liar. If it, if, if, here's, how, here's how the downfall starts. Satan never comes to the believer and say the word of God is bad or evil. He never comes to the believer and say don't obey the word of God. He says, you can be, you, read the word of God and. Listen to the word of God and. You can, yes, you can do what is right and. <laughs> See, he never discounts the truth. When he came to Jesus, he came quoting the scripture. Isn't it written? Jesus said it is written, but this is also written too. Notice when he came to Eve, did God really say? <laughs> He always takes what the truth is and twists it and makes it a lie. Because if you add anything else to the truth, <laughs> it ain't truth no more. Truth stands by itself as truth. The Holy Spirit, who is the truth, produces fruit in the life of every believer. If the fruit being produced in the life does not display the fruit of the Spirit, such a person is not walking in truth. The Holy Spirit is the truth. He indwells every believer. If the person say that they are a believer and not walking in the Spirit, accomplishing, and you can see it by the fruit of the Spirit being produced in their life, listen very carefully, they're not walking in the truth. Not because someone come in a building, say, I'm coming to church and say, hallelujah, glory be to God, means that they know Jesus. The demons in hell say glory to God. It doesn't mean that they know him or that they're part of him. They know God. Yes, they know God, but they don't have a relationship with God as children of God. If we say that we are, you cannot say you're a mango tree, but never produce a mango. Folk walking around, oh, I'm an orange tree. I see the leaves. You look like an orange tree. Where your fruit at? Well, I ain't have none yet. Well, Jesus cursed that fig tree. See, here's the thing. How do you know that someone is a believer? Oh, because it produce, a believer's produced after their own kind. Oh, so if I'm a believer, I'm producing other believers? Yes. Wait a minute, Pastor James, it's very difficult. Oh, it's called discipleship. If you call yourself a disciple of Christ Jesus, a disciple produces disciples. Are you producing disciples? It could be your kids, your cousin, your nephew, Pookie. It could be anybody. But you must be producing after your kind. You must be. Okay, let me move on. Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, 22, 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, uh, self-control, gentleness, uh, faithfulness. Against such things there is no law. In other words, what Paul is saying is, listen, if you want to see the fruit in someone's life, look at their character. <laughs> Are they an angry person? Well, the Spirit don't produce anger. Are they a a, a, a vengeful person? Well, the Spirit don't produce vengeance. Are they impatient? The Spirit don't produce that, and he's working on me. I reached there, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm still working on some of those fruit. I can just Holy Spirit to give me that patience one. That, 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 uh, kindness and, 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 and goodness and and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Oh my goodness, self-control. Oh, self-control. We're lacking self-control. Okay, so these are the fruit of the spirits, right? The fruit of the spirit. Jesus said before he left, he says, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, you will have power. I don't know about you, but you know, I used to like Marvel. I said I used to like Marvel. I was liking Marvel up until like 
2019, 2020, beginning of 2020. And then Marvel started doing some weird stuff where they started introducing uh, people of the same sex liking each other in their movies. And I'm like, okay, Marvel, nice knowing you. Because I got some good analogies from Marvel, but not anymore. See, here's the thing. Do I love Marvel more than God? Am I going to entertain so-called superheroes of the same sex playing with each other? I ain't got time for that. We sit down and we watch these shows and we indulge ourselves with these things and we compromise our integrity or we're sitting home and we say, oh, well, it's just that part of the movie. Oh, oh. So I'm just going to eat this part of poison. I, I'm not going to eat all the poison. I'm only going to eat a small portion of the poison. See, the poison is only going to affect me a little way because I'm not going to eat all the poison. I'm just going to take a little bit of the poison. So we sit down and then we pay the devil. Hmm. We pay to get these disgusting networks. We pay for it. We pay people to bring heathenism into our homes. We, what, where's the spirit of God in that? Oh, well, he's not leading us into self-control. He's not leading us. See, I'm convinced this is why John the Baptist said, I don't want to be around for He just lived in the wilderness. When it's time to go to work, he came and he preached, he baptized people, went back home in the wilderness. I don't want to eat your, I'm just going to eat locusts and honey. <laughs> I don't want to even eat your food. Your food messed up too. You have all those. Listen, read the labels. <laughs> so John said, man, I'm just going to go out and then I'm going to go and preach. Why? Because I got to make disciples. But I'm going to go back. I'm messing with you. <laughs> Listen. Jesus, who is the truth, gives the spirit of truth, the word of truth, to guide his followers to live in the truth. So let me run through this real quick. In John 17, 17 and 19, Jesus says, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. For their sake, I sanctify myself that they themselves may also be sanctified in the truth. Now here's the thing, Jesus uses this, this, this word sanctified. That is to make holy, to purify, to consecrate. And this is the word Jesus is using. Jesus said, I set myself apart for this purpose in order that they may set themselves apart for this purpose. Listen to what Jesus is saying. Jesus is giving his followers stewardship over the truth. He's giving his followers torch over the truth, and he's saying, just how I set myself apart, I want you to set yourself apart in the truth, for the truth. So Jesus is clearly telling his disciples, I'm sanctifying myself in truth. You sanctify yourself in truth. Now, here's the thing. He never said, I will sanctify you in the truth. He said, you sanctify I sanctify myself in the truth that you may be sanctified in the truth. We have to set ourselves apart for God. He's not going to set us apart. We have to do that. We have to sit back and see this is God. This is what he's called me to do. Here's what I should do. God is the one who's given us the power already by the Holy Spirit to set ourselves apart, self-control, for his purposes. Okay. Romans 15, 16. Uh, Paul says he was called to be a minister of Christ to the Gentiles, ministering as a priest, the gospel of God, so that his offering to the Gentiles may become acceptable and sanctified, set apart simply for the purpose of God. And Peter, when Peter is speaking, and we use this term, in we use this passage in apologetics, Peter says, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who may ask to give an account for the hope that is in you with gentleness and with reverence. By the power of the Spirit, set yourself apart for the work of Christ. Watch this. Sanctify. Set apart Christ in your heart. What is the heart? The thinking. Let Christ dominate your mind. Let Christ dominate your thinking. Why? Because if Christ is dominating your thinking, when the world is acting the fool, you can give a biblical apologetic for who you are and why you live the way you live. See, all I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, especially in this culture today, 
where people are being canceled. I'm seeing folks will hate on me not because I'm unbiblical, but because I'm not cultural enough. Not because I'm not teaching the Word of God, but, I, but practically, I'm not addressing what they perceive to be their issue. As if though the Spirit of Truth will lead me into their issue. Oh, but Pastor Dames, all the violence and stuff that's going on today now, you must address it. The Word of God does address it. It's called sin. But we don't want to really address the cause because we love the symptoms because that's what Satan uses to cause division. The reason why we have division is because of Satan. But folks don't realize it. Christians, the Spirit of God says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits. But yet still we wrestle against flesh and blood as Christians. Are we hating on people who don't know no better? But sinners sin. Why are you getting mad at the sinner who sin? Scripture says, love your enemy. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Bless them who curse you. But why are we responding just like the world and cursing those who curse us and hating those who hate us? Because it's satanic. And the prince and the ruler of this world is deceiving the people of God. That's why Paul says in the last days the church will become apostate. They will fall away from the faith and pay attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Jesus gave his followers stewardship over the truth, the truth, the truth. Oh, man, I love the truth. So let me close out with this. Four points real quick. Stewards are those who the spirit of truth seals and sanctifies everyone who have been chosen by God. So if you are a steward, you have been chosen by God, sealed and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 1.13, the Apostle Paul says, In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, so after you heard the gospel, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. And so everyone who would believe, we are stewards because we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. He says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, but we should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through the sanctification by the Holy Spirit and faith in truth. <laughs> See, our faith comes through the truth. If we're not allowing ourselves to live under the truth, then we will live based on a lie. There's only two ways to go, heaven or hell. There's only two directions, right or wrong. There's nothing in between. They're not 50 shades. No, anything in between is lukewarm and God has no desire for you and spew you out of his mouth. He does not desire someone who's in between. Who doesn't know? Well, I'm a Christian today. No, no, no. I'm a Christian today. No, no, no. I'm a Christian today. Maybe I'm a. What, what's all this guy what, doing the salsa? No, the Christian faith says that I stand on the word of God, and even though they slay me, yet will I trust Him. The Christian faith says Christ is the only way. He's the truth, and He's the life. The Christian faith says the Holy Spirit, who guides us, He leads us in to all truth and we live in truth we stand on truth what is the truth Jesus Christ his word stewards are the church they are the pillar and support of truth so we who are stewards we are the church the church is the pillar and support of truth so I will not align myself and you should not align yourself with anything that is not truth and to add anything to the word of God is not true but in uh, Paul told Timothy in 1st Timothy 3 15 but in the case I am delayed I write to you that you will know how one ought to conduct himself in the household of God which is the church of the living God the pillar and support of the truth so anytime you 
go into a church and they're not teaching from the scripture based on the scripture that is not the church if the church is more caught up in, and I need oh mm, yeah watch this it's easy to look at what's around you you can see it you can feel it when someone gets hurt you feel the pain you feel the hurt you can see people in culture and you can see what's happening and you can see the negative things all around you so it's easy to respond to that it's very difficult to respond to what you can't see a home where you're not yet to have an imperishable body that you don't have yet to have the word of God written on your heart that you don't have yet see we have a hope deferred but when you live in a microwave culture wants everything instant what the scripture tells us is that we are foreigners and we are aliens and simply passing through this earth but we have set up our abode and so because we are we are earthen beings and we only know this earth we don't understand those heavenly things so we don't look to heaven on a daily basis we don't make the decisions based on our Savior coming back to take us back to that place that he's prepared for us we make decisions based on the now the temporal things that we see and then we and and then we say oh but I love God but Jesus says if you love me you will do what I say this you prove that you love me when you do what I say he didn't watch this watch this watch this though it's, it's crazy he didn't say doing what he says is social justice taking care of the poor the sick the orphans or even the widows even though James says true religion is the person who take care of the widows and the orphans in their time of distress no 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 that is true these are things that is a natural product of the believer the believer don't seek to someone else to do those things the believer does those things I don't need anyone to tell me to help a homeless person if I see them I can help them I'll help them I don't need no one to tell me help feed the poor no I will help them I don't need no one to tell me what is right or what is wrong why God already did that for me he already did that for me he's already done that why I have the truth I have the truth the truth says from Adam ate that fruit dead came into the world and from Cain killed Abel folks were killing folk and the killing hasn't stopped yet and it will not stop until Revelation 19 <laughs> until Christ comes back on a horse and he brings an end to all wars he's going to bring an end to all wars and so we see here a steward a workman of the truth diligently preserving and handling the truth with precision notice what he says be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15. Be diligent. Now, we who are stewards of the truth, the scripture says that we should present ourselves approved to God as workmen who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Each and every believer, we are supposed to have the word of God rightly dividing it. How can we rightly divide it when we don't even give time to it? How can we... How can we... How can we rightly divide it when it's only a placeholder in our homes? How can we rightly divide it when we think that it's something to carry around and say, oh, I have a Bible? When we're not hiding the word of God in our hearts, but yet still we say we rightly divide it. How can you rightly divide it if you don't know it, if you don't study it, if you don't read it? Study to show yourself to prove. Be diligent to present yourself to prove. Every steward of God stewards the word of God. Okay, and I end with this. The steward of the truth always seek to lead others into the truth. If we have the truth, and we're stewards of the truth, our job is to lead others into the truth. Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.25, with gentleness, correct those on opposition, if perhaps God may grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth, and they may escape from the snare of the devil who is holding them captive to do his will. 
Anytime someone is not walking in truth, they're being held captive by the devil. That is the reality that I'm in. See, when I hear people speak, I'm just listening to see if they're speaking from God. How do I know someone's speaking from God? Not if they come and tell me, the Lord told me to tell you, uh-uh. No. Mm-mm. Keep that. I got his number. I got him on speed dial. As a matter of fact, he's program one. I just hit one. Uh, 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 dad, uh, I'm going through some crazy stuff right now. And this person tell me they, they came on behalf of you. Do, do you know them? I don't need no one to tell me what the word of God already told me. If we're not obedient to the word of God, why should I be obedient to someone over here? This is his word. His word is truth. And this is why this is very important. Paul says in Romans 1.18, For the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against the ungodly and the unrighteous, the unrighteousness of man and the ungodliness of man who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. We are living in a day, in a time, where the truth of God is being suppressed in unrighteousness. And people who call themselves righteous aren't seeking to live according to the word of God or teach the word of God. They talk about it. But it doesn't look like the peace, the kindness, the patience, the gentleness, the temperance, the self-control that is produced by the spirit of God, who is the truth of God, who leads us into the truth of God, which is Christ Jesus, who is the truth of God, based on his word, which is the truth of God. And we're, we are called to be set apart and sanctified in the truth of God. Father God, I glorify you this day and I thank you. I thank you, O oh God, for everyone listening right now. I thank you for everyone in the building. Father, I pray that you would lead God and direct us according to your purpose and your plan. Make your word plain to us. We know that you said in the last days that perilous times will come. These times are among us. Help us not to push your truth aside. Help us, O oh God, to live according to your word of truth. You said that we should study to show ourselves approved as workmen who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So help us, O oh God. In our weakness, you said that you will be our strength, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, and we trust in you. We trust in your word. So I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice this day, whether on Facebook or YouTube, the church website, no matter where they may be in this building right now, I pray that you would lead every heart and every mind and give us, O oh God, by the power of your spirit, help us to submit ourselves to your spirit that he would guide us, that he would lead us, that he would direct us into your truth so that we may prove ourselves doers of the word and not merely hear us. To the glory of your Son. Amen.